What's going on ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you're having a great day. In today's episode of Learning Roblox Studio, we are going to be going over the interfaces on Parks course. As always, if you guys do enjoy the content or it does help you guys out, make sure you smash the like button. Also hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon. If you guys like to support me and gain access to a lot of the scripts and games that I make in my other videos, there's a link down below in the description and you guys go check that out. With that being said, let's get into it. Interfaces on Parks. In the previous Interfaces courses, you built a basic score bar and interactive button. This course will show you how to use these skills to create an information board. The Surface GUI object lets you display GUI content onto surfaces in the 3D world. They're commonly used to display scoreboards or to signpost areas in the game world. So we can see on the image below, that's not like an image that somebody made in Photoshop. That's actually using a Surface GUI on a part inside of the actual world. And we use some of our previous GUI knowledge to make all of this. So for instance, long sword is most likely a text label. Then we probably have an image label, which displays a sword. And then we have another text label under that for the damage, speed, and size stats. Now we want to start creating a service GUI. Of course, I loaded into the game that we've been working on this entire series. You guys can load up whatever you guys want to. What we want to do is inside of our workspace, we want to create a new part, and we're going to rename that to info. Board. And then we want to move it over a little bit and we actually want to adjust the size. We're going to set the size to 15, 18, 1 and it makes a decent sized board. We can also move this up a little bit so it's definitely not inside of any of our other terrain. Then we want to insert a service GUI inside of it. And we want to rename that to info service GUI. And then inside of the service GUI, we want to add a frame and we're going to call this background frame. This is the background on which the information will be displayed. Adjusting the GUI, the face property determines which face of the part will be used to display the service GUI. The background frame object will be visible on the surface as a small white square when the correct face is selected. The face is on the right side because that's the way we're looking at it, but imagine if we were looking at it from this side. We would want it to display on this side of the part rather than the opposite side because that's how we want it to be displayed. So what we would do is we would go inside of the surface GUI and we'd search for face. Since it's already on front, we would want to set it to back so that it's facing towards us. Anyway, I'm going to set it back to front though because that's what they're instructing us to do and we'll just work on it from this side. Size. To make the frame cover your entire face, you'll need to adjust the size property. So inside of the background frame, we are going to adjust the size property to one, comma zero comma one comma zero and of course this is setting the scale of the x to one which means a hundred percent of its parent and the y is a scale of one which means a hundred percent of its parent as well styling it's often a good idea to add ui padding constraint to create a gap between the borders of the gui object and its contents so we're going to insert a ui padding into the surface gui and then we are going to set the padding bottom left right and top to 0 0.05 comma zero and we're going to set that for all of the different properties so there we go and we can now now see the padding has been adjusted around the actual frame so it looks like the frame is outlined by the part that it's being displayed on now we want to set the background transparency of the frame to one completing the gui use knowledge from previous interface tutorials to display information inside of the background frame we can see their image on screen and there's also a little guide on that so the object one is a text label to display the item name with an image label underneath displaying the wooden planks so inside of the background frame let's go ahead and add in a text label so we're going to set the size to one comma zero because we want it to scale the entire x size of its parent and then we probably want the y to scale like 0.2 so we're going to do that comma zero and i think the y might be a little bit smaller so we'll set that to like 0.15 and i think that's pretty good then we want to set the text to long sword and we're going to rename this to item name because imagine if we're going to have a couple of these or we want to modify this in the future we want to know that we're always going to set the item name here so then we want to also adjust the text a little bit more we want the color to actually be white we want it to be scaled i think we want the text stroke transparency to be zero so that it actually is outlined in black but i could be wrong we can change this later not a big deal and then also inside of the item name we want to insert an image label and then for the size we are going to set that to one comma comma zero comma one comma zero so that scales the entire way and then i guess we want to find a brick pattern inside of images so we'll say that this is a good enough pattern so we're going to copy that and paste that into the image field here so there we go we kind of have our brick pattern now although it is a little bit different now we want to go back to the info service gui and for z index behavior we actually want to set it to global and then we want to go back to the item name and we want to set the z index to two so that the text displays over our image 
image label. Additionally, we want to set the background transparency of the text to one so that we don't see the background at all. And we're using the image as the background now instead. So we now pretty much have the item name done. The second object is an image label to display the item image with a gray background color value. And a UI corner constraint is used to apply the rounded edges to each corner. So we're going to go ahead and throw in an image label inside of here. And then inside of there, we want to throw in a UI corner, which we'll adjust later. For the image label, we're probably going to want to center that, I would say. So the position is going to be 0 0.5 comma 0 comma 0.5 comma 0. And then also for the anchor point, we want to set that to 0 0.5 comma 0.5. So there we go. Now that's centered. And then for the size, we want to set that to maybe 0 0.4 comma 0 comma 0.4 comma 0. So it scales like 40% both ways. And I think that's pretty decent. We could choose to either move this up more or maybe we could even make it larger. It really depends on what you, how you actually want this to look. Then we also want to adjust the UI corner a little bit. Let's say 0 0.05 comma 0. We can see that's been made a little bit smaller. Maybe if we do like 0.1, it's a little bit more round. So I think that's good. Then we want to get a sword image to actually fill in there. And we'll use this one right here. So in the image property of the image label, we're going to set that to that. There we go. We now have a sword. And then we want to set the background color of this to a gray. And there we go. We now have our sword. And then the final object number three is a frame containing three text labels positioned with a UI list layout constraint to arrange them in a horizontal sequence similar to creating a score bar. So now that we're done with the image label, we could just rename this to like image or something. We're going to add in another frame and this is going to be called the stats frame and we are going to add in a UI list layout. We'll also add in a text label and there we go. So now we want to adjust the size of the stats frame to one comma zero comma point three comma zero. I think that's a little bit too big. So we're going to make the Y scale to like 0.2. And then we want to make the position for both the anchor point to 0.5 comma 0.9 for right now. I think that might be a little bit too low. And then for the position, it's going to be 0.5 comma zero comma 0.9 comma zero. So that's decently good, but we actually want to move it down a little bit more. So maybe we'll just set that to one entirely. So it's at the very bottom. And there we go. That is pretty good. That's not too bad. Next for the text label, we want to set the size to one comma zero comma one comma zero we will probably adjust this but for right now we'll just set it to that then for the text we are going to say damage equals eight for this we're going to scale the text up a little bit we're going to set the text color to white so then with the text we want to set the background transparency to one so that we don't see the background at all we also want to set the background transparency of the frame as well to one so we don't see that at all and now the ui list layout we want to change the fill direction from vertical to horizontal and then we can duplicate the text label to see how it looks and we can see that the text label are actually too big and we want to make them a little bit smaller so we are going to adjust the size of this text label from being one on the x scale to 0.3 would be fine because we're going to have three anyway that's going to work good enough for us and then we could duplicate this three times and we could see now the text is all displayed nicely we could also set the horizontal alignment to center so they're all appearing in the center and then we could also have the padding at least for the scale to be like 0.1 maybe 0.05 so at least they're a little bit spread apart and there we go now we can call this the damage label. We can call this the speed label. And then we can change the text from damage to speed equals three. And we can set the final label to size. And we're going to say the size is nine. Now you might be wondering why this looks kind of ugly, how the damage and then the equal eight is below the actual word, unlike the size, how that looks nicer. The reason for this is because we're using text scaled. If you wanted to, you could adjust the size of the text yourself to be one specifically. So 50 would be the largest we could get without it actually breaking to a different line. And if that's what you guys wanted to do, you definitely could disable the scaling and set this to 50 as well. We might even be able to get it a little bit larger considering the word smaller. So we can see for speed, 61 is the biggest that we can get that, but then the size will also need to change depending on how many characters are actually in the text. So if we add 33 instead of three, then we can see the line gets broken again. So you'll always have to be constantly adjusting that. Now the final thing, and one thing I want to say about this UI, they did a horrible job explaining this GUI. Even the ways that they explain it, it doesn't make sense how they actually did it or they didn't include all the information to actually recreate this. Like for instance, what one might think is you might be able to duplicate this uh, image label that we use as the background for the top 
text label and we might be able to put that into the stats frame and use that as the background but no that's not going to work because we're using a ui list layout so one of the ways to kind of go around this is we put the image label inside of the background frame and then we would set this to stats background image we would then need to adjust the size from one to whatever we made this frame right here so let me see we made it that 0.2 so we would set the size the y scale to 0.2 comma zero we would need to set the position to 0.5 comma one and and 0 0.5 comma 0 comma 0.1 comma 0 comma 1 comma 0 so there we go now it appears in the same area and then we want to adjust the z index of this hopefully to zero and that'll be behind everything so yeah there we go now we have the background set up and it's pretty similar to what they did it definitely doesn't look as good i admit the image that we got isn't great but i'm just doing this to show you guys how this can be recreated service gui properties now you have a complete service gui try changing the following properties to see their effects light influence because service uis exist in a 3d world they can be affected by light like any other object. The light influence property controls how much the surface GUI is influenced by light. The normal value is 1, meaning the GUI space will be lit the same as surrounding objects. If you set it to 0, images inside will remain lit as you design them. This can be useful if you want to create something like a neon sign which glows bright even if it's in a dark environment. So we can look inside of our surface GUI and we can look for the property called light influence and then we can adjust this a little bit. So currently it's 1 and if we drag it down to 0, we can see it's less influenced by light but if we put it up to 1, it is more influenced influenced by light. Adorni. The part on which a service UI is displayed is determined by the Adorni property. If blank, it will automatically display on the parent part. The ability to set Adorni allows the creation of interactive buns when the GUI is not parented to the part. To do so, drag the service GUI into starter GUI. So that's what we'll do. And then we want to adorn it. So look for the adorn property inside of the service GUI. And we want to set it to the info board part. And now we can see they are connected. With that all being said, that's the end of this course. And that's how you can work with service GUIs to add GUIs directly into your game on different parts. As always, if you guys did enjoy the video or did help you guys out, make sure you smash the like button. Also hit the subscribe button and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon if you guys like this for me and gain access to a lot of the scripts and games that I make in my other videos. There's a link down below in the description and you guys can go check that out. With that being said, I hope that you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next episode.